In today's video, I'll be showing you how to convert VHS and eight millimeter tapes into digital copies of themselves. If this video helps you out in any way, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments down below. As we go through this process, there are several ways of going about doing this. So if you're having trouble, then let me know and I will try to help you out. To start off, I'll go ahead and list all the items that you are going to need. These items will be in the description down below, so check those out if you don't already have them. The first item you need is a computer or laptop of any brand. It doesn't matter if it's Apple or if it's Windows. The second item you're going to want to have is an HDMI cord. HDMI cord. The third item is a converter. This converter is an AV to HDMI converter. As you can see, it has the three colors, yellow, white, and red. And then on the other side, it has HDMI. This other cord is just, it's power cord. That's, what's, that's what powers the actual block itself. Now the fourth item, depending on what you are converting, if it's VHS or eight millimeter tape, we're gonna go ahead and start with the camcorder. The fourth cord that you need is a AV camcorder cord. They all look pretty similar and this one is going to have a 3.5 millimeter jack on one end. And then on the other end, it will either have three or two colors. My cord is not as good and I only have video and left audio for my cord. But the, the cord in the description down below will have video, left and right audio. The fifth and final item that you need is just regular AV cords. So these look just like so, and they have red, white, and yellow on one end, and then red, white, and yellow on the other end. You are also going to need a way to play back these tapes. So if you have a camcorder, then a camcorder will do. If you have a VHS player, then a VHS player will do. If you have a VHS camera, that will also work as long as you have the proper cords. The final thing that you're going to need is OBS. OBS is a free software that you can download online to your computer or laptop. There are thousands of videos out there about OBS and how to use it. It's pretty simple, but I will go ahead and show you the basics here momentarily. This portion of the video will show how to convert an eight millimeter tape into a digital format. The first step you're gonna to wanna to do is take your tape and put it into the camera. Once your tape is in the camera, you can go ahead and take your AV cables that are for your camcorder and plug them in. Now, there are several ways of going about this. Your camera may have a different plug-in, and if that's so, then you're gonna to wanna to look at your camera itself and see what plugins it has before you go ahead and purchase any of these cables. The next step is to take our converter. Now that we have the cord plugged into the camera, we're going to go ahead and plug the camera cord into the converter. Yellow goes into yellow and I have black. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into white. The black is just my left audio. Yours may have white and red. Mine only has one. So here's our setup so far. We have the camera plugged in with a cord, plugged into the converter. This is the power cord for the converter. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. Don't let this confuse you. It's just the power cord for the converter. It has nothing to do with the cameras and this whole process. It's just powering the converter. Step number three is plugging in your HDMI cable to the converter. So here we go. Here's our setup. Camera is sending video and audio through this black cord into our white converter. The converter is converting it into a new signal in which that can be sent through an HDMI cord. Now we're gonna take our HDMI cord and plug it into your computer. I have Apple, so I have to use a dongle. Yours might have an HDMI port right built into its computer, but I had to buy an adapter. My camera is now plugged into my computer, so what I'm gonna do now is open up OBS. 
If you've never used OBS before, then upon opening for the first time, it may walk you through some setup steps, I'm unsure. But once you get everything set up and ready to go, you're gonna wanna go down to the bottom left corner where this plus is and click, click it, click plus. It's gonna ask you to enter a new name. I'm just gonna enter the name tape. Click okay. And now we have made a new scene. And now to the right of that, you have a blank space with sources above it. Click that plus. A window is gonna pop up with a whole bunch of different things. What you're looking for is a video capture device. You wanna click video capture device. It's gonna ask you to name this source. I'm just gonna call it video capture device two. Don't pay attention to anything else on the screen. Just video capture device two. Click okay. Boom. Now, what it's asking is select a signal for which you want to read. What, what signal do you want to have appear on your screen? So I'm gonna go down to devices and I am using the cam link. That is what I'm using to convert my HDMI cord into an acceptable port for my Mac. I'm clicking cam link. And then down here, you can see the presets. I'm gonna leave it at 1280 by 720. Click OK. Now I have a blank, now I have a large black box with a small blue box up here. If it's not already selected, go ahead and click the blue box and then drag it to the size of the screen, like I'm doing here. Now again, we're gonna go down to the same plus that we just clicked on under sources, we're gonna click it again, and we're looking for audio input. This is asking us what audio do you want to capture that's being sent to your computer. We just hooked up this whole process that is sending audio and video from the camera into the converter, and then the converter is sending it to the HDMI cord that's going into the computer. So we wanna add an audio source as well. Audio input capture. I'm leaving the name, just whatever it comes up to be, audio input capture, you can change it if you want. Click okay, and now it's asking what source do you want to select. I'm gonna collect and cam link four because my audio and video is being sent through the same cord. Click okay. Now under my audio mixer, I only have one audio source pulled up. This may look slightly different for you, but again, go ahead and drop your comments if you see anything different. Very quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my settings for recording. So in the bottom right screen of OBS, settings, and what you're, look, what you're looking for is output. Click on output and then go to recording because we're gonna be recording this onto our computer. These are the settings that I'm using. You might be using slightly different settings if you know how OBS works, but this is what has worked for me. So starting from the top, type, I'm keeping it at standard. Recording path, this is telling you where you want this sent once it is done recording. I'm having it sent to my desktop because that's where I can most easily find it. If you have a folder, a specific folder that you want it to be put into once it's done recording, then you can go ahead and change that to whatever folder, but I'm keeping it at desktop. Going down, I'm, I'm not selecting generate file name without space. Recording format, I'm keeping an MP4. Audio track one is selected. Encoder, now if you're using Windows, this may look slightly different. I am using X264. I am not selecting rescaled output going down here. Now this part is important as well. For me, I am using CBR. That means constant bit rate. Again, these things are very complicated and I don't even fully understand them, but keep it at CBR. Down here is bit rate. Mine's at 15,000. Now that is fairly high for recording, I think. If you're having trouble recording, if it looks strange on playback, then go ahead and lower this to 8,000. But I'm leaving my bitrate at 15,000, and you try that too. If it doesn't work, 
go ahead and change it. I'm not selecting use custom buffer size. Keyframe interval is two. It might be zero at first, you wanna change it to two. CPU usage, very fast. Profile high, tune none. Once you do that, don't forget to click apply in the bottom left and okay. One last thing I wanted to mention was below audio mixer, go ahead and click the gear icon and click advanced audio properties. Ignore game sound and wave mic. We're only looking at audio input capture. For me, I want to make sure that only track one is selected, just like that, track one selected. I also want to make sure that monitor and output is selected. This allows you to hear the audio through your computer to kind of just make sure that it's picking up. You don't have to have monitor and, and output selected, but I like, to, I like to hear the audio and make sure that I'm recording it. After this, go ahead and close. Now I'm gonna click play on my camera. It's gonna send all the information through the cords to my computer and it should appear on screen. There we go. Our picture's appearing on screen and I can see in the audio mixer and I can hear it that there is audio coming through. If you want to adjust the sound, you can pull this bar back and forth. Now this is important because this is what's gonna be on your digital copy. If you take this bar and pull it all the way down, then your video is gonna be silent. If you pull this bar all the way up to the top, then your video might be a little too loud. You pretty much just wanna make sure that the video's not getting to the red too often. After this, go ahead and click start recording. Now your computer is recording whatever is being shown on screen. If you have a tape that's two hours long, you're gonna to wanna to come and click start recording. Set a timer on your phone if you'd like. Go do whatever you wanna do and then come back two hours later and you're gonna to have to manually click stop recording. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click stop recording. Once I'm done recording, I'm gonna go ahead and click stop on my tape if yours is still going. And then I'm gonna to go to my desktop and watch back the video and make sure everything sounds and looks as it should. Here's my desktop and I have a video right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. And let's see if it sounds good. Everything sounds and looks as it should. Once it's in that digital format, you can put it wherever you'd like. But if it's a family video, I might suggest making two copies of this. Now let's go ahead and move over to the VHS tape. These are almost identical, but the setup is slightly different. So for your VHS tape, you're gonna need a VHS player, AV cords with both colors on the same side, yellow, red and white, yellow, red and white, your converter, your HDMI cord, and then your computer, of course. Step number one, I'll go ahead and hook up my red, yellow, and white cords to my VHS player. Now, it's important that you connect them to the out, DVD, VCR, audio out. You don't want to connect them to the in ports. That's what the ports on the front are most likely gonna be. These are for game consoles and stuff. So on the back of mine, I have audio out and video out. I'm gonna go ahead and match the colors up. Yellow to yellow, white to white, red to red. So now I have my VHS player with my AV cables coming out of the back. I'm now gonna take my HDMI converter, match the colors up, white to white, red to red, yellow to yellow. And unlike my camcorder cable, I have left audio, right audio, and video. Then you're gonna wanna take your HDMI cable and plug it into your converter. And then if your converter is powered, make sure you plug in the power cable. After that, 
just like before, go ahead and plug your HDMI cord into your computer. Once we got all this set up, let's go ahead and open OBS once again. And for OBS, we don't have to change a single thing that we did. Go ahead and open it back up and you can leave all the settings as they were. And I'm gonna take my tape, put it into the VHS player. And then once we click play, we should see it appear on screen. There we go. Our tape is being sent through the cables to the converter. The converter is converting it into a new picture and it's appearing on screen. You can see we're getting both left and right audio down below. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up and make sure we got good audio. There we go, it sounds good. It is a bit staticky. If you have a lot of static, there is a few things you can do to get rid of that. The first thing is you wanna check and make sure all your cables are connected properly. If you have a bad HDMI, then it might not send a proper signal. If you don't have good AV cables, then it might not send a clear signal. The second part is a little bit more difficult, I guess you could say, but the player does depend on the quality of the overall picture. So if you have a really old, crappy, rundown VHS player, it's not gonna be able to read that tape properly, and it's gonna send a static picture and image through the cables. If you have a brand new VHS player for some reason, then you should be able to play back a VHS tape at the best quality it can be. The third option is the tape itself. If the tape is messed up, then there's really very little you can do. I think there's tape cleaner. You can clean tape in a way somehow, but I say your best option is to check your cables and make sure you have a good VHS playback system. That does matter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click stop recording. Stop recording. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it on my VHS since I'm not all the way done. Yours might be done, but I'd recommend making sure all this works properly before you go and uh, record a two hour video and leave and come back. Now I'm going to my desktop and I'm gonna play it back on my computer to make sure it sounds and looks as it should. Father, what a blessing it is today for me to be here, for all of us are going to be here for this covenant of marriage. Here we go, it's real grainy, but that should go away after a while. Again, that's probably just the tape. If the tape's corrupted, then there's little you can do. Well, there we go. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Like I've mentioned before, there are several ways to go about doing this. And depending on the tapes you have, the playback method, if you have a different model camera, if you have different cables, if you have a different converter, if you're using a different type of software and not OBS, there's many, many different ways you could go about doing this. But for me, this is the simplest way and I feel like the cheapest way. OBS is free. These AV cables, a lot of people have them lying around their house. If you don't, then they're less than $10 on Amazon. This converter, I believe, is around $15 on Amazon. HDMI cords can be bought at any Walmart. And then a VHS player or camera will probably be the most difficult thing to find these days. And then any computer should work. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe if you want more helpful videos in the future. Peace out.